بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم The second connective tissue second basic tissue in our body is connective tissue in the background you see a picture from the connective tissue it's a real picture from the connective tissue the cells and also the extracellular matrix at the end of this lecture you will, be, you will be able to uh, have a definition of connective tissue and say the function of connective tissue also you understand the, the connective tissue components like cells, fibers and ground substance and also you can classify the connective tissue start with the function of the connective tissue the first one said and the first one says uh, the connective tissue uh, with uh, providing extracellular matrix can support package and connect other tissue together to make organs in our body and also with a lot of immune cells in connective tissue like white blood cells the connective tissue have a protection and defense roles in our body and also the connective tissue with uh, fibroblast cells have a repairment functions usually the connective tissue allow to the other tissue to repair themselves if they cannot repair themselves connective tissue repair that tissue for example heart cartilage and also as you know the fat tissue is kind of connective tissue and also you know the uh, fat is a, a conduct uh, conduct um, of a heat uh, you know the fat uh, conducts heat poorly so serve as the insulation uh, in our um, body you know uh, under our skins we have a um, uh, fat tissue call it the subcutaneous uh, tissue subcutaneous, subcutaneous uh, connective tissue and this uh, tissue is uh, formed by fat cells so have a good insulation in our body and the, the last one transportation connective tissue with a lot of interstitial fluids serve as a medium for diffusion of nutrients and also the waste material connective tissue like other tissue have two components cells and extracellular matrix unlike the other tissue i mean the epithelium muscle tissue and nervous tissue that mainly formed by cells the connective tissue major component is extracellular matrix because of that we show here the backs of uh, extracellular matrix bigger than the cells and it show that this part is a key component in connective tissue Extracellular matrix in connective tissue have two constituents protein fibers and gland substance. So we can say each connective tissue have three components cells, protein fibers, and gland substance. Each tissue have these three components we can call it the connective tissue because the other tissue, for example, the muscle have um, uh, for example the muscle tissue doesn't have any fibers nerve tissue also doesn't have any fibers epithelium have a very very uh, little amount of fibers and substance but we know in the connective tissue this part is very big in connective tissue you see a picture from the connective tissue the cells like fibroblasts, macrophage, lymphocyte, fast cell, mast cell, neutrophil and also fibers 
plasium fiber, elastic fiber, reticular fiber, and also the grand substance. You see here the background of this picture showed as a grand substance because the macromolecules in the grand substance don't uh, we cannot see them by especially the light microscopes. So uh, usually in the picture uh, the background showed as a grand substance. We cannot see any things here. Now we are going to explain each component of connective tissue. Uh, and first I start with uh, cells. You can see the name of the cells in the connective tissue like fibroblasts, mesenchymal cell, fat cell, macrophage, plasma cell, mast cell and white blood cells or leukocyte. Some of them you see in green and some of them in purple. In green means these cells are permanent residents of connective tissue. It means they um, born in connective tissue and die in connective tissue. They are permanent cells. But in the purple, these cells originated from the bone marrow and then circulate in blood and uh, come into the connective tissue by crossing the blood vessel walls and uh, perform their function in connective tissue and after that they die by apoptosis. So these cells are transient cells. They are temporary cells in connective tissue. Again you can see the connective tissue, real connective tissue here. The cells of connective tissue. You can see the nucleus of these cells fibers, different kind of fibers in connective tissue and also uh, grand substance. These parts are grand substance. Also you can see a blood vessel inside of the connective tissue. Usually we have a blood vessel in connective tissue. Again a picture from the different uh, type of cells in connective tissue like fibroblast, fibrocyte, plasma cell, adipocyte, large lymphocyte, small lymphocyte, macrophage, mast cell, neutrophil, and eosinophil. These are the cells in connective tissue. Start with fibroblasts. The fibroblasts are common cell in connective tissue and we see these cells in two states, inactive and active. In the active time we call it fibroblast and in inactive form call it the fibrocyte. You can see the differences between the two cells. Fibroblasts have a big nucleus and also euchromatin with a prominent nucleolus, nucleolus and also a large amount of cytoplasm with process, cell process. And in vice versa, fibrocyte have a fused cytoplasm, heterochromatin nucleus without nucleolus, and it's a spindle shape without any cell process. Usually fibroblast, when activated, for example, by damage, these cells activated by Gross factor and converted to the fibroblast and after repair again fibroblast transform to the fibrocyte. You can see a picture from the fibroblast with a lot of organelles inside of the cells and intense synthetic activity in cell you can see produce a lot of collagen or extracellular matrix, usually the extracellular matrix of connective tissue produced by the uh, fibroblast. And it's a, a very good picture for an activated fibroblast. Also we see in other cells uh, from the, in the fibroblast group is uh, myofibroblast. Let me explain it by my drawing. For 
for example here when we have when we cut our skin something like this we have a cleft or fissure uh, something like this is a wound we call a, uh, we call it a wound and uh, we have a blood coagulation this part okay and uh, uh, after this uh, wound creation of this after uh, creation of this wound the myofibroblast cells appears from the bottom to the uh, upward for example the first let me change the color of the ink for example they first appear in this part these are myofibroblast okay and these cells by future uh, they are between the smooth muscle cells and uh, fibroblast uh, i mean they have a lot of actin and myosin filament inside of the cells so by the contraction by actin and myosins these cells cause the closing of the wound closure if i after closing i show it by this green line after contraction of the myofibroblast we have a wound future uh, wound fissure or uh, wound cleft something like this because the my, my fibroblasts here contracted so they, they close the opening of wound so accelerate the wound healing because because we have a small space to repair okay we call it the wound Can traction. Okay, we call it a wound contraction because of the myofibroblast. After the wound healing, the myofibroblast disappear. We want to see the fibroblast and fibrocyte in the real picture please uh, uh, tell me the name of these cells which of these cells are fibroblasts and which one is fibrocyte please uh, tell me the uh, red arrow showed there which one yes fibroblast because we have a big nucleus and heterochromatin, you uh, excuse me, euchromatin, and the blue arrow indicated the fibrocyte. Also in this picture, fibrocyte and fibroblast. Also, you can see a electron microscope picture from the uh, fibrocyte again with a spindle shape and also heterochromatin nucleus another cell of the connective tissue is a macrophage you know these cells specialize for the phagocytes of uh, any invader i mean the bacteria virus sometimes uh, fungi and other invaders also the phagocyte of uh, tissue debris, phagocyte of neoplastic, can uh, neoplastic cancer cells, uh, and also the removing of uh, apoptotic bodies uh, remain from the apoptotic cells. Uh, these cells scavenger all of these debris. Again, we have these cells in two states in inactive form and also active form 
in inactive form these cells is a small cell a small round cell call it the fixed macrophage or histiocyte when this cell activated for example by tissue repair or by uh, inflammation this will transform to the free macrophage or activated macrophage cell get big increase in protein syn uh, synthesis increase the amount of organelles inside of the cells uh, the cells have a irregular surface with uh, some folding protrusion and also indentations so, uh, something like these indentations uh, it means the cell get activated also you can see the cell is bigger than the inactive cells and also you can see the active cell start to phagocyte for example here a bacteria and digest it by a enzyme inside of the lysosome this cell originated from the monocyte inside of the blood here we have a picture from the electron microscope TM for a active macrophage you can see we have a huge nucleus and with a regular surface with a lot of folding it means we have an active or activated macrophage I said that these cells originated from the uh, cell monocyte inside of the blood originally uh, cells again from the bone marrow comes into the blood and and from the blood enter to the connective tissue and convert it to the macrophage or differentiate it to the macrophage also these cells goes to the liver and uh, create the coffer cells again monocytes come to the nervous tissue and produce microglial cells and again the monocytes come into the skin and produce Langerhans cells and again the monocyte come into the bone and produce osteoclast cells you can see all of these cells originated from the monocyte it means all of these cells are macrophage with different names because the because the scientists uh, the, at first uh, when they discover these cells uh, they think these cells are different from each other now we uh, uh, we have uh, information that these cells are the same cells. Uh, I can call them uh, liver macrophage or coffer cells. I can say the nervous tissue macrophage or microglial cells. And uh, so they are same cells. So uh, the scientists uh, name them, name all of these cells as a group called mononuclear phagocyte systems. When we call these uh, cell systems, means all of these cells can be grouped in a mononuclear phagocy systems. Uh, mononuclear means that all of them have a one nucleus, except this one, the osteoclast, produced by a fusion of a lot of monocytes. So we have a lot of or multi nuclear cell here, osteoclast in bone is the uh, responsible for the absorption of the bone all of these cells also we have in a healthy situation except this one we have these cells multinuclear giant cells in the pathologic condition i mean in the disease conditions and this uh, cell produced in a infection again let me ex uh, explain these cells here when we have a small pathogens or invaders so the macrophage with this size can focus it all of them but when we have a lot of invaders or huge invaders so the uh, macrophage cannot phagocyte them so a lot of monocytes comes here and by proliferation increase the number of the monocytes and they attach together fuse together and make a big cell 
called multinuclear giant cells. So these cells can phagocytes. So these cells can phagocytes the uh, invaders or the big invaders. For example, like worm. We have this kind of cell in a chronic infections. The next cell is mast cell. You can see here a section from a mast cell. This cell filled with a secretory granules inside of the cell. And when this cell is stimulated, uh, the cell releases all of this granule. I uh, named these cells, it is like and resemble a, this weapon, fragmentation mine. You know we apply this uh, weapon in the border of the country and uh, any invaders uh, without permission wants to come uh, to our country, uh, this uh, weapon explosion cause and or kill the that persons or invaders. It's exactly like these cells. Also we put these cells in the border of our body, for example under the skin, around the blood vessels, under the epithelium of digestive system, under the epithelium of respiratory system, exact the border of our body. And uh, when we stain these cells, by some um, basic, basic dye, uh, we can see the granules display a metachromasia. For explaining metachromasia, see this slide. All of you know the, uh, this powder. You know it's a henna. And the color of the henna is green. The powder of the henna is green. But when we put the liquid hen on our skins, we see uh, another uh, color. Uh, for example, the brown, red, or orange color on our skin. This changing of color called metachromasia. Metachromasia. Meta means the next chromasia means a color. In these cells, for example, we use telloid in blue. You can see the color is a blue. But the granules, after staining, gives us a purple or red color. This changing of color called the metachromasia fissures. And the reason is the content of granules uh, have a lot of uh, acidic radicals, for example, like heparin. And these acidic radicals cause the fusion of uh, uh, dye um, molecules and create a dimers and polymers. And the color of the dimers and polymers is different than the monomer molecules. When we have a monomer molecules, it is a blue. When we have a dimer or trimer, we have a purple. And when we have a polymer, it's a red. When we stain it by H and E, we can see this cell is a basophilic cell stained by hematoxylene. And the high amount of granules cause obscure the nucleus. We cannot recognize clearly the nucleus. By the electron microscope also you can see a lot of granule inside of this cell with a central nucleus. The content of uh, the granules of mast cells are heparin, histamine, serine protease, and eosinophil chemotactic factor. Let's uh, see the function of these materials. Heparin, as you know, is an uh, anticoagulant factor. In the uh, site of inflammation, after releasing the heparin, increase the fluidity of the blood but locally. And by this way, so the blood can bring a lot of immune cells, immune cells into the site of inflammation. Histamine have a dual function. 
on a, a smooth muscle cells of the blood vessel uh, wall, uh, the histamine causes the relaxation of the smooth muscle cell in the blood vessels and causes a dilations of blood vessels and increase permeability of this blood vessel and at the end finally cause the swelling or edema in the site of inflammations. Serin protease activate other inflammation mediators in the site of inflammations. Eosinophil chemotactic factors from the name it comes this factor attract or recreate other white blood cells like eosinophil neutrophil to the site of inflammations. And the last one is leukoterines. Leukoterines uh, act or perform uh, like a uh, histamine, but very uh, slowly. Sometimes they call, the scientists call it a slow reacting substance of anaphylaxis because it functions very, very uh, slowly. But as you see here, this, uh, the, I mean the leukoterine isn't inside of the granules. But immediately after the cell stimulation, this substance, I mean the leukoterine, produced from the membrane phospholipids by a phospholipase. So the, leuco the leukoterine is not inside of the granules. And your books uh, mentioned it's uh, in a wrong way and said it is in the inside of the uh, granules. Now we want to know how the cell is stimulated and release these granules. You see a lot of receptor for IgE, immunoglobulin type E, it's kind of antibody, antibody type E. This is have a lot of receptor for this antibody. When our body exposure for the first time uh, for an antigen, for example, by a bee biting, the bee venom stimulates our immune systems and our immune system produces antibody against this antigen, I mean the bee venoms. At the first time, because we produce this antibody locally, this antibody attached to the muscle in the site of bite and cause the degranulation of the, these materials and causing the swelling, pain, itching and redness of site of bite. But in the second exposure, for example, the bee the bite out in the second time, in the second time, this antibody distributed in our, uh, in, uh, throughout our body and we have uh, this antibody in our systemic uh, uh, fluids, for example, blood, uh, lymphs. And uh, when the second times B venoms comes into our body, this antibody attached to the venom and attached to the receptor on muscles throughout our body. So all of the muscles in our body have a degranulations. So we have high amount of heparin, high amount of histamine, and high amount of other factors. Especially among this material, histamine is very dangerous because the histamine, high amount of histamine, cause the blood vessel uh, dilations. And this dilation causes the decrease of blood pressure and cause the faint uh, and faint and cause the uh, person falling down, falling down the ground. And also from the other side, the histamine causes the uh, bronchospasm because of the contraction of the uh, small muscle cell in a uh, respiratory system tracts. 
so the, uh, the we have an unconscious person that ca that who cannot uh, who cannot breathe so after a while this material uh, cause uh, the died people died person uh, by uh, is bited by uh, a bee we have these reactions uh, we have this reaction in uh, immediate hypersensitivity reactions. The uh, best uh, example for this kind of reaction is anaphylactic shock. I think uh, all of you know this kind of shocks. We have this kind of shock, uh, especially after uh, bee biting, after administration of the uh, kind of antibody like penicillin. Uh, when, for example, uh, when we uh, administrate for the second time a penicillin a person, this administration cause and kill the person. Because of this reaction we reviewed here. I also told the uh, I also told that we have two kind of these cells in our body under our skin and around the blood vessel we have a prevascular mass cells and under the epithelium of respiratory and digestive system, we have a mucosal mass cells. These cells, uh, uh, the content of granules of these cells differs uh, somewhat. For example, prevascular mass cells have a heparin, more in their granules, and uh, um, mucosal mass cells have a chondronectin instead of the heparin in their granules. Again, another picture that uh, show us uh, the leukotrienes and the prostaglandin produced from the phospholipids of cell membrane, not inside of the granules, after the granulations. And these two material cause bronchospasm. It's very bad situation for the person reacted the uh, monocyte, uh, the mast cell reacted the mast cells. And the last cell is a plasma cell. You can see these cells have a large amount of RER, rough in the plasmic reticulum inside of the cells. Because these cells produce antibody, and you know antibody is a protein. So these cells need a lot of RER to produce large amount of antibodies and also these cells have a big and huge Golgi uh, apparatus near to the nucleus. The lifespan of this cell is 10 to 20 days. We can see recognize we can recognize these cells in uh, side of our tissue by the shape of the Nucleus. You can see the shape of nucleus is very similar to the analog Clark face. The plasma cell originated from B lymphocyte. When the B lymphocyte is stimulated by an antigen, these cells differentiated to the plasma cell and they start to produce antibody against to the antigen. All of antibody in our body produced by a plasma cell. In the tissue sections, also we can recognize the plasma cell by the shape of nucleus. So it is uh, very similar to the analog clock, and also basophilic cytoplasm because of high amount of RER and the site of Golgi organelles. The Golgi organelles. Uh, is not stained by a uh, routine staining I mean HNE so we can see a clear and unstained part inside of the cytoplasm by this way we can recognize these cells uh, especially in the site of inflammations